Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a Mono Blue Mill deck. Now I tried many different versions of Mono Blue Mill, and after many failed attempts, this was one of my latest creations. It used a Whelming Wave to good effect for Mana Sorcery from Jumpstart, that returns all creatures to their owner's hands, except for Krakens, Leviathans, Octopuses and Serpents, not too many of those being played. But Whelming Wave not only resets the board bouncing all the opponent's creatures, but it's also a way for us to reset all our Enter the Battlefield creatures that mill the opponent. We've got Merfolk Secret Keeper that can mill the opponent for 4, and then afterwards we can play it as a 1 mana 0 4 blocker that we can maybe pick back up with Whelming Wave. We've got Overwhelmed Apprentice that mills the opponent for 2 and lets us scry 2. And then a Wall of Lost Thoughts, a 2 mana 0 4 blocker that mills the opponent for 4 when it enters a battlefield. So all these creatures we can pick back up with our Whelming Wave, as well as bouncing all the opponent's creatures. So that was a neat synergy. Then we also have Drowned Secrets as another mill engine that mills the opponent for 2 whenever we play a blue spell. And then we also figured out that Ashiok was pretty important, since so many decks rely on their graveyard with all those escape creatures like Uro, so being able to exile their graveyard with Ashiok was pretty important. And then of course we also have Brufak, the new addition from Jumpstart, that doubles all our mill effects. And then Baron, also a nice one, as it can bounce the opponent's creature, but we can also use it to bounce our own creature and then draw an extra card, and maybe reset one of those Enter the Battlefield abilities. And it also synergizes with the Runaway Together, which uses the same principle of both bouncing our own creature and the opponent's creature. And then you can tell I was kind of getting desperate with four main deck copies of Spell Pierce in a world of Goblin decks, where this does nothing, just to give us a bit of interaction against those non-creature spells which we were weak against, because we did have the creature aspect covered with all the bounce effects, and then four copies of Opt to round out the deck and synergize with the Drowned Secrets. So this was my latest build, I also tried versions with the Fairy's Tutelage, but those didn't really work out. And uh, yeah, so I was kind of stuck here with this build, and then I came to the realization that uh, Brufak is indeed a human advisor, so it synergizes with persistent petitioners, and I'm not proud of this deck list, but it's been performing a lot better than my previous attempts. So persistent petitioners, a 2 mana 1-3 human advisor, and a deck can have any number of cards named persistent petitioners, so that's why we have 30 copies. For 1 mana we can tap it and mill an opponent for 1, but we can also tap 4 untapped advisors we control, and then target player mills 12 cards. So if we happen to have a Bruvac in play as well, we can mill the opponent for 24 with the Persistent Petitioners, and we can also tap Bruvac with the Petitioner's ability. So it only takes two of those activations to win the game, essentially. So Bruvac makes this deck a lot more powerful than it might appear, and we even have four copies of Opt to make sure we draw Bruvac as often as possible, since on turn one we're not doing much anyway. So the deck list is very simple, just try and go turn two Petitioners, turn three Bruvac, turn four double Petitioners, and mill the opponent for 24, and then mill them for 24 again, and that's usually game over. And then the mana base has four copies of a Radiant Fountain. Since we've got so many generic mana requirements, that being able to gain two life every now and then against aggressive decks can be worth it. There's some other colorless lands we could try as well, like Zelfern Void to scry one and maybe find Bruvac more consistently, or more interactive lands like Blast Zone against a bunch of one drops. So there's definitely a bit of wiggle room in the mana base. And then of course 18 beautiful basic islands with the mill theme. So yeah, as I've said, I'm not proud of the deck list, but you can't argue with the results. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. No Bruvac, but I think we still keep... Opt can find a land. Opponent on a Lurus deck. It's been a while since I've played against Treasure Hunts, but this looks like the uh, Core Spirit Dancer Aura deck. So if they have a turn to Core Spirit Dancer, we're in trouble. If they don't, we have a chance. Well, there's a turn to Core Spirit Dancer. So if they can follow that up with an Aura, we're gonna die pretty quickly. Although there's Bruvac. Let's 
gonna be an all that glitters. Take four. Land is good, means we can double petitioners next turn. Solid footing. Makes it eight power. And a savior. Can't really afford to chum block next turn. What I can do is chum block with the petitioners while activating uh, tapping four of our advisors and then next turn I can do it again. But if they have another aura and then sacrifice all states to give protection from blue, I might just be dead. So hopefully that's not the case. So definitely chomping now. Now it's kind of funny, the opponents taking a mulligan might affect how many cards they have remaining. They have 25. Puts lures in hands. Interesting. Another Bruvac. So I can play Petitioners, let's see, I guess it doesn't hurt to opt first. Find a Petitioners. So I can play one. Yeah, I won't be able to activate the Petitioners and tap four of them, but I guess I'll play another. But my opponent can't kill me without playing another enchantment, and if they play another enchantment, they would end up decking exactly, because they have 24 cards remaining. Opponent plays Lurus. Gets access to a whole bunch of enchantments out of the graveyard. But they have to cast an enchantment in order to... I guess... Mm, never mind, Core Spirit Dancer is a May ability. But Angelic Gifts is not, so I think that does it. Yeah, I forgot Core Spirit Dancer is a May ability, you don't have to draw a card. But they decided to play Angelic Gifts, which does. And now with exactly zero cards left in their library, they're gonna be drawing a card with Angelic Gift and lose the game. Well, that was an interesting turn of events. So maybe had they played any other one-man enchantment and activated Alsaid instead, they would have been able to win here. Well, I'll take it. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Fine hand, no Bruvac, but uh, can't really mulligan a hand like this. Mountain Skirk Prospector, so we're up against Goblins. So the 1-3 body from Petitioners makes for a nice blocker early on, as we can block any 1-1s and 2-2 creatures. So hopefully that buys us just enough time to be able to uh, mill them out. The Goblin deck also tends to see and draw a lot of cards, which helps the mill plan. But a turn 3 Muxus could be hard to beat. And there it is. Don't have a reason to mill first. Double Cranko and Snoop. No haste giver at least, but Cranko is scary. And I guess we'll mill them. Yeah, I'm probably gonna die to the combination of Muxus plus Cranko before we can mill them out. Maybe if we top deck our uh, legendary creature, we can speed up our clock enough. So, pawn plays ringleader. I'm not gonna tap because I want my creatures back to block. But they did hit some pretty good cards. 
Only Mox's attacks, hits for 7. Interesting that they didn't activate Krenko first, but I'll take 7. Mill for 12. Play more Petitioners. Opponent does have a Jam Palm in hand, which can kill one of them. So the question is, do I play another one, or do I mill the opponent for one? They've got 29 cards left. I think I just play another one. And then I can still mill for 12. Technically, if I draw another Petitioners, I could mill for 24 next turn. But I might be forced to chum block already. Chieftain to pump the team. Yeah, I'm probably just dead here. They can still activate Krenko. It's a lot of goblins. Yeah, as it turns out, turn 3 Muxes is pretty good. There's no way I can survive here, so let's see how much damage they can deal. Minus 53, not bad. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and we have a Bruvac in our opening hand, so this is perfect. Up against a Gigantha deck, not sure what that means. Temple Garden into our Boreal Grazer, okay. Another Grazer. Is your opponent's ramping? Nope, never mind. So this is a Watley High Lord type situation. Well, if they have Watley High Lord or Assault Formation next turn, that's gonna hurt. I still haven't drawn a fourth lands, so I'll be unable to play double petitioners if I don't draw one. Alright, Wall of Runes, so I guess they don't have their enabler yet, but they did keep a card on top. And a secret keeper. Well, I guess I'm milling the opponents right now so they can draw the card they kept on top. That makes sense. They did keep a Watley on top. So that's gone, and as long as they can't find an enabler, we're doing fine. Opponent puts Gigantha in hand, that's good news. And now it's time to double Petitioners, and start milling the opponents for 24 with each activation. Hardcast Gigantha. Definitely a power play. So I can mill with two petitioners. So this should just be game over. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Definitely gonna keep, but uh, hopefully we can find a couple lands along the way. Opts can help me find the lands as we're up against goblins. Take a fountain. Goblin Matron on top of the deck. Uh, 
Let's see what they search up. Moxus, which can be played next turn thanks to the Prospector. Interesting. So I can opt plus Petitioners or I can play Bruvac. I think I'm enough behind here that I just need to try and get lucky and draw land next turn and have a Bruvac in play to start milling for 24. I think the fair plan of just four Petitioners by turn 4 is going to be too slow. It's going to be a Trash Master instead. That's not so bad. Alright, we drew the lines, so we've got a chance here. Mountain on top of their deck. Don't think I need to mill that. I should put a stop on their draw step so I can mill them before they get a chance to play the card on top with uh, Snoop. Opponent's gonna play Muxus. I could mill them now so they don't get a Crater Maker, but Crater Maker's not too bad, I don't think. So. They can have it. They did not hit a haste enabler, so that's great for me. Although they could have played the war chief had they used prospector here. So I'm glad they didn't. I'll block. They can use the crater maker to finish off Brufag, but we've got another one, so I don't care. Alright, opponent's got 20 cards remaining, so that means we just mill them for 24. And that's game. Alright, so with a good draw, if we have Bruvac, we are able to sometimes beat the Goblin stack. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. We'll need to get lucky and draw a few lanes, but I don't think I can mulligan this. Especially on the draw. Turn 1 Secret Keeper. Alright, is this the Mill Mirror match? Let's see how we do. Petitioners versus the classic version. Well, if we don't draw lands, we could be in a bit of trouble. There's a wall. I wonder if my opponent has also adopted Whelming Wave in their build. Mystic Sanctuary. Alright, and there's land 4, so double petitioners. And we'll pass. And yeah, there's a Whelming Wave, so opponent came to the same conclusion as I did. They're also playing black, so... Thieves Guild Enforcer, see a couple counter spells. Ritual of Soot. Alright, time to rebuild. We'll just go double petitioners. And then with a the land we can go Bruvac plus another petitioners. Put them down to 24 cards, so we just need one more activation. There's a tutelage. We still have 38 cards left. Yeah, doing it the old-fashioned way is a uh, slow and painful process. Mm, 
And there we go. Petitioner's Mill beats Classic Mill, which is a shame, because the gameplay is quite repetitive in this deck. But uh, yeah, there we go. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a great draw. We've got Bruvac, opt to find a land. Three Petitioners. Take that beautiful island. Alright, so we're all set here to curve out. Facing turn one mountain. And another goblins deck. There's a prospector on top. But yeah, I don't think I wanna try and mill it here. Because I wanna be able to play Bruvac. Instigator. Alright, Serpoint setting up a nice board for a potential Moxus. Not sure what they're considering here. If they have a Gem Palm, they won't be able to kill any of my creatures because they would only have two goblins in play. Plays a Matron instead. So they're looking for Moxus. So if they have a land, they will be able to play it next turn. But we can start milling for 24. And Muxus also searches out a few cards from their deck. So we could just kill them by next turn. So that happens. They did hit double Chieftain, which is a little scary. But I can shun block with one Petitioners, because we've got more in hand. So they've got 44 cards, I just need to activate twice here and they're dead. So let's see, 16 plus 6, 22, so I am forced to chum block. And there we go. So even a decent draw from the Goblin stack we can beat if we have Bruvac on our side, which is something I wasn't able to do with previous versions of the mill deck. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. No Bruvac, but double opt to try and find it, so we'll keep. Facing Umori, so an all-creature deck could be Goblins. Yep, turn one mountain. Never mind, cycles for Garden Cave, so maybe it's something different. Do I keep island? I think so. I still need a couple extra land drops. Alright, so it might be goblins after all, just with for Garden Cave. So I can either mill them for one or play an opts. I'll probably cast opts. Try and find Bruvac as soon as possible. At least they can't attack. As we have double petitioners on defense. That's no Bruvac, so bottom. Alright, so let's see if a draw without Bruvac is fast enough to beat goblins. My guess is no. But we're about to find out. Chieftain. One Chieftain's okay, double Chieftain would be very bad. Could also double block the war chief so it dies. I think that's acceptable since we have another petitioners in hand. So 
So no more haste enablers for the opponents. Opt to try and find Brufak. And then play another Petitioners. Opponent plays Muxus off the top thanks to Phyrexian Tower. Well, I did not see that one coming. Maybe I should have put a stop on their uh, draw step to see if they could play Muxus, but I wouldn't have played around Phyrexian Tower necessarily. Now do I mill them to get rid of a Prospector? They only have two cards in hand, so I don't think I do. They hit Double Prospector and Instigator, Wily Goblin on top, that's fine. They don't have a good attack. Mill him for 12. Is their last card a Jump Helm Incinerator, maybe? Nope. Not the best dross so far. 19 cards left. So I need to survive one more attack step without losing a Petitioners. They did have a Gem Palm. Yeah, that's too bad. Muxus is going to hit for... 10. Enough for lethal. So I can't mill them for 12 because I need the blockers back. But all hope is not lost. I could still potentially draw a Petitioners. Because I might not have to chump Muxus. Although now Matron can get a Chieftain and that's probably enough. Although they only have 15 cards left, there's a chance there's no Chieftains remaining. They had a Krenko, but no Hastes. So Krenko is fine. They have 14 cards left, so... This will put them to 11, and if I draw Petitioners, that's another 12. Which would be game. Now, do I have to chump Moxus? I don't think I have to, but we'll see here. Just Muxus attacking. It's 11, I can take it. Had they attacked with everyone, it might have made things a bit more complicated. Alright, just gotta draw any advisor. So we're definitely favorites to draw here. Got way more advisors than uh, other cards in the deck. And there we go. That was a close one, even without Bruvac. Sweet. All right, we're on the play, and oh boy, this is uh, not quite a hand we were dreaming of. I need to draw lands and petitioners, which is most of my deck, to be honest. I think I'm gonna try it still. I probably will be able to draw enough petitioners. I might not be able to have four lands by turn four, but with Bruvac, I think I can afford to keep a hand that's a little slower because he more than makes up for it. Turn 2 treasure map. Alright, at least it's not a goblin's deck. Also, we might see... Storm's Wrath, a Wiper board. No need to attack for one. It's just a waste of time. I 
Alright, I guess we will be able to mill for 24 after all. Wait until our opponent maybe scries with treasure map to mill them. No upkeep stop. Uh oh, is this a Storm's Wrath incoming? Nope, thrill. Well, if they don't have removal, they will be dead. Crashing drawbridge. So this might be an Iron Crank feat plus Death Bell War Cry combo deck. And yeah, there we see the Iron Crank feet and the Death Bell War Cry. So if you wanted to know what the opponent was playing, here you go. A free deck deck. Alright, so. In conclusion, Mono Blue Mill with Petitioners and Bruvac. Well, if you draw Bruvac, the deck's not bad. Problem is, what if you don't? Then you're just milling the opponent for 12 at a time, which is not nearly fast enough for Historic. We did get pretty lucky in our games today to have Bruvac in almost every game, but uh, don't expect that to be the case. This is not really a deck that can mulligan aggressively to find Bruvac, because we do need a lot of resources between lands and petitioners, so unlike the core Spirit Dancer deck, which can keep a two lander with Spirit Dancer and one or two enchantments and still win the game, that's not really the case for Bruvac. So while we are capable of some turn 5 wins, it's probably not consistent enough to be a competitive deck in Historic, and it's also quite weak to interaction if the opponent has a sweeper, or a card like Maelstrom Pulse, a card like Legion's End is also pretty effective against us, as you can imagine, so there's definitely a lot of interaction that disrupts our game plan. So while it's not a competitive historic deck, it's probably still the best mill deck available at the moment. So that's gonna do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.